Okay, <clears throat> traders, that's 2 p.m. UK time. Welcome to another uh, live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you can type a Y in the chat box, just so I know we're uh, ready to get going. <clears throat> Testing audio, if you can hear me and see the welcome screen, if you type a Y in the chat box, great stuff, thanks. Okay, just uh, before we get going and before we jump into today's content, if you do have any questions, if you could um, make a note of those, and at the end of today's session, I'll open up a quick Q&A if there are uh, any questions you have with respect to charts that I haven't covered or looked at, um, that would be great. So uh, before we jump into it, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, the most important aspect of that for today's purposes is that the views expressed by me are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. <clears throat> for those that are here for the first time, uh, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co found and exit a consulting startup. Having a front row seat to the dot com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the SP 500 or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was going to be feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Uh, working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, uh, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of developing a strategy that suited my personality, researching and develop and extensively back and forward testing strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment, that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of an individual trade or a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, uh, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered annual positive returns since 2008. From 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also the resident market experts exclusively uh, providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. My other, I guess, passion project is uh, leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talents. With FX Career Swap, we don't just develop uh, retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Uh, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And if you are interested in learning more about FX Career Swap, there's a number here on the screen to call the trading desk in London, or you can drop them an email and they will provide uh, additional information with respect to uh, what we do at FX Career Swap. So let's, uh, let's jump into the charts. <clears throat> I want to um, premise today's review of the charts with uh, 
a couple of uh, observations really with respect to the, the price action we're seeing at the moment. Um, I've, I've informed the, the traders who I work with, uh, especially today, um, and noted that we have, we've entered a period of extremely low volatility in terms of the Forex markets. And um, as sure as, as day follows night, um, sorry, as night follows day, uh, low volatility um, begets high volatility. And I think, or I, I sense we're heading into a phase here uh, where in these first uh, week to, to, to 10 days of June, I think we could see a, a significant uptick in terms of volatility, uh, looking at the price patterns that, I've, that we've, we've got on the, most of the charts at the moment. Um, I think we are uh, we're just on the cusp of maybe a, a little uptick here in volatility and hence an uptick in opportunity. So let's start with the um, global equity markets and see where they are, how they are set up. And so what we can see and what you'll see is a theme uh, on a bunch of charts today is that we are forming these, uh, these wedges and we're getting into the, uh, the business end of a bunch of these wedges. Now, uh, a wedge can break either way. It can break, it, we can test it and it can break to the downside or we can break out to the upside. Um, more often than not, the signal that we're gonna break to the downside is, uh, is that of divergence. And when I talk about divergence, I use uh, a proprietary indicator called a psych indicator, which is essentially just an enhanced RSI tool, um, just gives better, better readings. And, um, and what we've got here, as you can see, as we're testing the S&P here, looking to test new highs, I'm looking for us to break uh, to the upside into, uh, into the back end of this week now, uh, 4,300 level. We've got uh, weekly range resistance, 42.70 monthly range resistance 4278. And then we've got this ascending trend line third test here. And that's accompanied by a significant amount of divergence now. So what I'm anticipating is that we head into next week, we've obviously got uh, public holidays in the US and in the UK on Monday. So we could grind this out into the top side here, but I anticipate as we head into this early part of June that we should, uh, we will probably get a signal of a corrective phase to develop. And um, if this plays out, then I'll be looking for a test of the ascending trend line support back down to 1491 in terms of the S&P. NASDAQ, NASDAQ's in a weaker position than the S&P at the moment. We haven't, uh, we're not really getting up to retest these highs. And so I sense uh, that the NASDAQ may struggle at current levels or certainly into this uh, resistance zone here. And so, the type of thing I'd be thinking about with the NASDAQ is we get in here and then we get an equal leg correction. So when I talk about equal legs, that's measuring uh, versus this leg to the downside here. So if we, uh, if we do trade into this resistance zone, and we get, uh, we have a get uh, bearish reversal patterns, then I'd be looking for a test down into the 12,700 level in terms of the NASDAQ. Dow Jones, similar to the S&P, um, if we break to the top side, look for a test here of the ascending trend line resistance before getting that, uh, that pullback move, certainly to test the ascending trend line support. So we'd be talking about a move from up towards uh, 35,600 back down into 33,840 as the initial downside target. And we could maybe see a little bit more, but what we want to do in terms of when we're setting our expectations for, for targets is just play it as a logical, uh, you know, if, we, if we're testing the top side trend line resistance, the logical area where a, a downside corrective move uh, would potentially complete would be the ascending trend line support. The DAX, <coughs> DAX is, uh, is squeezing higher here again in this uh, little wedge pattern. So I've been looking for the DAX to get up into the ascending trend line resistance zone here, 16,150, and then uh, and then get a pullback, certainly a three wave move. Initially, we've got an internal trend line here uh, that would see us back into 15,370, um, but we could then uh, test the major or the primary trend line support back down to 14,700 would be the, uh, the objective on the downside. Nikkei, weakest of them all really, has, uh, has no, not, hasn't seen the recovery that we've seen in US markets. And so we're actually sitting at resistance here, this prior support potentially to act as resistance. 
And so if, uh, if we start to roll over here, then we look for another leg to the downside to test this uh, 26,970. Alternatively, we do this type of pattern, a double correction into the, into the top side of the channel before getting the next leg to the downside, like so in terms of the Nikkei. The VIX, the volatility index, it's also setting up nicely here. We're, uh, we're coming into lows, 17. So what, ideally what we'd like to see here is it, as, the, uh, as the equity markets break to new highs in terms of the S&P and, and the Dow, not so much the NASDAQ, but we're, what we'd love to see here in terms of another confirmation for this setup will be a test into this 14 area. I think that will set up a spike in terms of the VIX up into the 30 level trend line resistance. Note again with the VIX, we've got plenty of divergence developing. So if we can get this, this volatility crush into, uh, into the back end of this week or, or Monday, and then I think we're set to see a volatility spike. And that spike is what will fire the correction in terms of, uh, in terms of those equity indexes. And then that obviously feeds into uh, the foreign exchange markets. We'll start with uh, the dollar here. Dollar is testing um, trend line resistance. It looks like it, it, it's holding for now. If it holds, what I'd anticipate is we break to new lows in terms of the dollar index. And then we'll see uh, we should, if we're going to see that spike in the VIX and the correction in terms of the equity markets, then that should set up a corrective phase in terms of the dollar index. And so that we can think about um, retesting 91, uh, 60 to 92 area initially as, uh, as some resistance. And again, with the dollar index note, we've got bags of divergence developing. So any new lows here in terms of the dollar index would, uh, would likely see the psych indicator roll down to test the trend line support. And we use that as an additional confirmation, looking for those bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to play the dollar index from the long side. Treasury yields as well, just creeping up again here. And um, if we can take out uh, this uh, descending trend line resistance in the triangle pattern here, then um, we could see yield spike. And again, this this is the you know this is the story that we saw with that initial phase of dollar strength earlier in the year. So we'd look for a, a move through the resistance here and uh, see yields uh, trade up towards the two percent level, and that would give support um, to the to the dollar index and would like to weigh on equity markets in the short term and uh, and obviously see that and support the uh, the VIX move higher. Gold, looking for a pullback into support here for gold. Uh, we've been trading a nice trend channel. Um, and what I'm looking for is a pullback into support. 1860, bullish reversal patterns. I think we can set up a move then to test 1960. And uh, from there, maybe we'll see a more sustainable bigger corrective pattern develop, but near term watching 1860, watch for bullish reversal patterns, target 1960. Silver sitting on the trend line here, trying to uh, trying to base to, uh, to make another test of that 30 level. If we can get, uh, get up into this area, then I think uh, from there, from that 30 zone, I think once again, we would see a, a corrective move develop. That correction could be uh, could be the stage then, or could set the stage for a break of the 30 level. So uh, watching how we trade at the 30, if we get another pullback move here uh, that finds support into, let's say, um, let's look at the retracement here. So yeah, something into that 38.2% retracement, that, would, that could then set up the move uh, to take out the 30 and build for another leg higher in terms of silver. Crude oil, uh, still, uh, whilst we hold 67, there's still a chance that we trade the equality objective to 56.29, or certainly down into the trend line support, 58.32. And again, you can see that if, um, if the, that would feed into the idea that, uh, that we're going to see a bit of risk off tone in these markets. Uh, obviously, crude trades in tandem with risk assets. And so if we, uh, if we, get, if we hold the 67.04 and get the, the pullback, then uh, that would uh, that would that would fit with that narrative. Alternatively, we could take out trend that we could take out these highs and um, and put in a high into this area, into the, the, the back into the back end of this week, early next week, and then get a, a more sustained pullback in terms of crude. Uh, again, if those if the equity markets take out their highs, then that would fit with crude potentially making a new high here before. 
uh, getting a pullback. Again, note the divergence. This is this is what's key really to all of these charts at the moment uh, is the significant divergence we're seeing. And what we obviously we're not going to trade divergence in and of itself, but we use the price action confirmations then to align with potential divergence. Um, copper consolidating, nothing to do there really. Uh, Bitcoin, interesting as well, as we hold symmetry swing resistance. So when I talk about symmetry swing resistance, I'm measuring the last correction overlay against the current low. So whilst we trade below um, 43,300, those prior lows there and the, those prior breakout highs, then I think there's a chance that we test down into this 20,000 level, uh, the yearly pivot, test it for above. And then from there, we could look potentially to put, it, put in a more um, meaningful base in terms of, uh, in terms of Bitcoin. The dollar, Yuan, this, uh, this one's under scrutiny at the moment. Um, if we hold, if we can hold support here in the dollar yuan um, and get some consolidation, obviously the PBOC have been on the wires. Um, if we can get some consolidation, then there's a chance for the dollar yuan to break to the upside. And if that breaks to the upside, that will take the dollar index with it, um, as, this, uh, as this is kind of leading the price action at the moment. However, if we take out the trend line support here at the 636 level, then I think we're looking at 630 next. And that would suggest that we actually can see a new low in the dollar index. And then we'll see what sort of momentum divergence we get. As you can see here, we, it's building even, uh, even the dollar yuan. So uh, familiar story. Dollar yen has held trend line resistance and, and it looks like it's going to try and make a move uh, to the top side now. So uh, what we've been looking for here is uh, it's an equality objective. So this is that swing and there. So that will put us back into a double top here, potentially in the dollar yen um, on 10.85. Again, watch then for this divergence to, uh, to weigh on the pair. <clears throat> Swissy trying to break out here of its trend line resistance. If it can, then, uh, then we can expect at least a three wave corrective move to correct against this pattern, uh, sorry, this leg to the downside. So the minimum, what you'd anticipate would be uh, something like this to play out into the 50% retracement. And then we'll see if sellers are gonna step back in in terms of the Swissy, or we could potentially have a more significant inverse head and shoulder scenario on the cards and, uh, and we could trade it higher. Dollar CAD. <coughs> So this, is, this one doesn't have divergence. And so this is why when I look at this, I think uh, even if we do get a break higher here, it's likely we need to make another low to set to get it to get some decent divergence. Because whilst we uh, on this on this swing to the downside, we haven't got any divergence. And so I'm less constructive on the dollar CAD um, as opposed to some of the other dollar dollar crosses. So uh, need to see a, a correction to the upside and another new low to get some momentum divergence before we can get more constructive in terms of bigger corrective phase. <clears throat> Euro sitting in the wedge here and uh, looking either to two scenarios. If the dollar, if dollar's gonna make a new low, we look for a, a, a test up into the prior highs before setting up a corrective move in terms of the, uh, in terms of the Euro. Or alternatively, if the dollar holds and it's going to break its trend line, then we'd anticipate the euro will break its trend line support. At, oops, wrong tool. Let me remove that. So what we'd be looking for there with the euro to break its trend line support and then put in a corrected move before the next leg to the upside. So we're either going to see a, a potential double top here with a bunch of divergence or we're going to break down and play for a three-wave corrective move. Uh, certainly can think about 1950 as a target on the downside. Then we've got the Euro Yen trading right into the, again, looking at the wedge scenario here. Plenty of divergence, so just watching and waiting for a reversal pattern. We've got monthly range resistance, uh, 133.75. Uh, weekly range resistance 133.19 and we've got this ascending trend line. So any reversal patterns that develop here um, are going to be paying attention to and I'd be looking for a test of trend line support down to 130.50 as the corrective target. Euro Swiss, seeing if we can get a test of the equal legs objective here in a double correction 
38.2% uh, retracement. This would be the ideal um, area to see a reversal, this 109.05, and then we can think about a retest, uh, well, certainly a retest of trend line resistance and a breakthrough there would suggest that we've got a wave four low in place and we should take out the, that 111.50 to the upside. Eurocad, uh, nothing to do in that one at the moment. Euro Kiwi, this is in this one's interesting. It's sitting right at trend line support here. So I'm going to be paying attention if we can get some reversal patterns here in terms of the, uh, the Euro Kiwi, um, then I'd be looking at long positions because we have a uh, an equality objective at 172.67. So uh, paying close attention to the next to today's close, tomorrow's close, maybe even Mondays might consolidate in and around the trend line support here before getting a signal to go long for 172.67. Sterling, sitting at what could potentially be a major uh, double top here. I've got an order uh, in place to sell Sterling just below today's lows. Doesn't look like we're gonna get filled here at the moment. So what Sterling might be setting up for is uh, just putting in one more high here. So weekly range resistance, taking out the stops above this prior high. But what have we got on the chart down here? bags of momentum divergence, and this is likely to be addressed. And so we could see this type of scenario, certainly thinking about the ascending trendline support initially, 139.90, and then uh, a swing to 139 would, uh, would be easily feasible. So uh, watching, if we take out the highs and get a reversal just through these prior highs, with all this momentum divergence, then uh, I'd be looking at on the short side returns of sterling or we break uh, today's lows and that would be uh, that would be sufficient for me to to get in on the short side in terms of sterling sterling yen much like euro yen sitting looking for this uh, trend line resistance here so we're getting the spike now so if we can get a move up into uh, 155.70s i'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns and again we've got plenty of divergence here um, with the psych indicator so Watch those bearish reversal patterns, uh, shorts, certainly a three-way corrected move would be uh, feasible down into the 151 area as, uh, as a reasonable downside objective. And that's just looking at the last swing that we had to the downside and using that as a, uh, as a reasonable downside target if we get the setup here. <coughs> Swiss, yeah, uh, sorry, Sterling Swiss. This one uh, could give a, a long signal actually here and what we'll be looking for tonight on the close, if we can, oops, not at all. <clears throat> so certainly we could think about a target up to 128.77, which would be the equal legs objective. And, uh, and on the basis that we've got this move here, So if we think about the Elliott wave structure of this being a, a potential fourth wave low uh, versus this one, two, three, four, then we can think about a, five, a fifth wave objective, certainly up into the uh, 132.95 area. So very interesting to see where we get uh, the close here on the Sterling Swiss. It's uh, psych, it's gone bullish, bullish on the uh, five period VWAP. And so uh, this, uh, this could give a signal tonight, paying close attention to that one. Uh, Sterling Kiwi, looking for a test of the trend line support. I haven't quite got that yet, but uh, again, you can see this one breaking higher then. And um, we could be thinking in terms of equality objectives, uh, back up into this resistance 202, 202.26, uh, could certainly be on the cards there. I'm not keen about taking it here. I really want to see it test the trend line and get that better risk reward. Aussie. Aussie's uh, sitting at an inflection point here. If we um, if we lose this uh, this support zone here at the 77 level, I think we can very quickly trade down to 75.36 and we could even go lower than that. Let's see, in the quality objective have us down at 74.19, these prior highs. So that would be, if we get a couple of closes through this trend line, I think we can start to see uh, that melt to the downside in terms of the Aussie. So, uh, so pay close attention to that. Sykes rolling over here, going negative. There is, um, uh, about a week, a week or 10 days ago, there were some big downside uh, options protection taken out in terms of the Aussie. 
And so uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see it start to break lower here. There's a yen. <clears throat> Looking for a test. Uh, it's ascending. It did wedge top here will be 86.79. Uh, again, if equity markets make new highs, it would drag the Aussie yen with them. And then maybe we see, uh, see that roll over. The Aussie Swiss. I like this one on the long side as well. If we can get a close through uh, 69.70s, then I think we can see the uh, 71.43 uh, get tested. We've held the 38.2% retracement of this leg to the upside and symmetry swing versus this corrective leg overlaid against the high and we're holding and, uh, and we've held monthly range support. So keeping an eye on the close tonight, the Aussie Swiss could be another one. Sterling Swiss, obviously, I've just talked about as well. The Aussie CAD has potential. Um, ideally, what I'd like to see here with this Aussie CAD is that we take, uh, we make a move to test the yearly pivot from above. We've got 38.2% retracement of the advance off the, off the March lows last year. We've got an equality objective and we've got monthly and weekly range support. So I'd be paying very close attention to this 92.60. And certainly we can think about um, 96.80 as an upside objective if, uh, if this trade sets up. So keeping a close eye on this, uh, this confluence over there. Uh, Kiwi. Seen a, uh, seen a spike through the trend line resistance. If I'd be, if we get a close back through it to the downside today, we can think about that as a false break to the upside. And, um, and we're sitting on then a potential fourth test of this trend line and third tests are great, but by the time we test it the fourth time, more often than not, we'll, uh, we'll see that break. So if that broke and the Aussie broke to the downside um, and we start to see risk, mark, risk assets roll over, 68 would be the area, these prior highs, um, to the downside. So paying close attention to the um, to the Kiwi here, uh, we did see a slightly hawkish um, read from the RBNZ, uh, but uh, we're not uh, we're not seeing this thing take off uh, like one would expect if the market really bought into that story. And we could actually be sitting here at uh, head and shoulders type top. So paying close attention to the Kiwi, Kiwi yen, looking for it to test the target zone here. Um, into the 80 level. And again, with, that, with risk assets and risk markets poised, um, we could see uh, rejection from here. And then we could be looking for a test of 78 to the downside. Kiwi Swiss. I was looking for this to hold the trend line resistance. We'll see if it does or if it doesn't. But if it does hold, uh, then I think we get a move down to 64.06 for the Kiwi Swiss. Kiwi CAD, uh, isn't it? I was looking for it to test the trend, the trend line resistance here. Doesn't even look like uh, we're going to do that at this point. Um, but if we do get a test here, watch for bearish reversal patterns. I think we could see a leg to the downside. Swiss yen looking for the 22.06 monthly and weekly range resistance, 22.53. Alternatively, look for a break through the weekly pivot, 121. I think this one, along with a bunch of these ends, is set for, uh, for a corrective phase to develop. So I'm just watching for the price action. And again, plenty of divergence. So not, not confirming these new, new highs as being well supported and hence vulnerable to a correction. CAD yen, looking for a break into a new high here. And, uh, and again, we've got uh, plenty of divergence to look at. So um, any new high here where we don't take out this prior high in terms of the uh, momentum study leaves us vulnerable to a corrective phase. So those, uh, those are the charts I'm watching at the moment. And so, like I say, watching really closely now over this uh, next uh, seven to 10 days, to see if these patterns play out and we, uh, we, we address this the significant momentum divergence that we're seeing across a number of asset markets and certainly uh, watching the equity markets as a lead, watch the VIX and, uh, and the dollar index. So um, yeah, I see uh, some interesting opportunities in the week ahead. Are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, uh, typing an N in the chat box is useful so that I know we're, uh, we're all on the same page. 
Okay, good stuff. Well, if there aren't any questions, I'll, uh, I'll wrap this one up here and we will reconvene at the same time next week. And I uh, hope you've, oh, question in a second. Hi, Patrick, can we take another look at Swissy? Yeah, sure. Uh, So yeah, I'm looking, if, if we can break out here, if we can break this trend line on a closing basis, then I'd be looking at a three wave corrective move in terms of the Swissy. And we could be, we could be potentially looking at a, an inverse head and shoulders scenario here as well. I'll just draw that in for you, so it's clear. Uh, so let's see it. So I mean, it could be a more meaningful opening place. I doubt, I would say at this juncture, I'd be initially just looking for a three-way pullback into the 92 area. Um, <clears throat> if we take out the trend line, uh, then, Again, I, I could see us, I, I, if we think about, you know, where the dollar index is, where the euro is, where these risk markets are, then, I, you know, it would be reasonable to expect a, at least a three-way correction to the 50% retracement. And then from there, we'll see whether or not the sellers are going to step back in. Um, Albert uh, Cable. Uh, <clears throat> so cable, I'm looking at the potential for a, a significant double top here, Albert just watching we've got a lot of divergence here and that should be addressed uh, before we uh, before we, we move higher again um, I think there is potential to, to go higher but you know anything into this 44 area third test of the ascending trend line in what could be a uh, pretty significant wedge or we hold a double top on a closing basis and that momentum divergence gets addressed uh, euro yen <clears throat> So the euro yen, I'm looking for a test here of the 133.70 to uh, 133.90 area. And I'm watching again, the reason why I'm watching is we've got a lot of momentum divergence. So bearish reversal patterns, I think, uh, set up a test of the ascending trendline support at 130.40, Albert. Any other questions? Okay, if there are any questions, I'll wrap this one up here and I uh, hope that was helpful and I'll catch you all at the same time next week. Thanks very much, everyone.